Oh, wow, friends. New information has just been released on the fourth round of stimulus checks, and many Americans have already begun to receive a one-time fourth stimulus payment. These checks are worth at least $200. Friends, I know that many of you are wondering whether you will be receiving another relief payment. So please make sure you watch until the end of this video because I will be going over the exact details. Also, I will be giving away four $75 Walmart gift cards every week. Friends, please make sure you enter the giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. During the months of November and December, I will also be surprising several of you with $200 gift cards to say thank you so much, friends, for being part of this community. And at the end of this video, I'll be announcing today's winner. So please stay tuned. Approximately 1.8 million New York residents were eligible for a relief check from the State Department of Taxation and Finance in October. But many residents are beginning to wonder if their checks got lost in the mail. The state began mailing the relief payments, averaging about $270 per resident around October 13th, and have said that most residents were supposed to receive their checks by October 31st. Acting DTF Commissioner Amanda Hiller said, we are delivering these relief checks to hardworking New Yorkers who've been feeling the pinch of inflation. The average payment is about $270 for each recipient, which will help address rising costs associated with the crisis and inflation. Friends, I know that many of you have yet to receive your stimulus check. The state officials have noted that some individuals may receive their checks after October if the department is still processing their return and has also said that the October 31st date was just an estimation. The State Department of Taxation and Finance said that taxpayers do not need to take any action to receive these checks. However, if you have not received one yet, there are a few steps that you can take to make sure that you're eligible. To be eligible, you must have filed your New York State income tax return by April 18, 2022 or had a valid extension of time to file. According to officials, New Yorkers who have recently moved should update their address with the Department of Taxation and Finance to prevent any delays in receiving their additional New York State child and earned income tax payment check. Also friends, many people are now criticizing President Biden's comments last week about shutting down coal plants. President Biden stated, we are going to be shutting these coal plants down all across America and having wind and solar. So in response, key Senate swing vote Senator Joe Manchin called the remarks offensive and disgusting, claiming that the president takes job losses too lightly. Senator Joe Manchin said, President Biden's comments are not only outrageous and divorced from reality, they ignore the severe economic pain the American people are feeling because of rising energy costs. But the backlash also came from a variety of sources, including a mining lobby group and the United Mine Workers of America Union. The White House quickly released a statement reaffirming President Biden's commitment to coal workers, adding the president's comments had been twisted to suggest a meaning that was not intended. The incident demonstrates the difficult task of Biden and the Democrats, which is balancing climate solutions with economic concerns. Coal is a very carbon intensive fuel. From its peak in 2008 to 2021, U.S. annual coal production fell by about 51 percent. Its workforce has also seen steep declines. As a country undergoes an economic and climate transition away from sources of energy that generate more greenhouse gases, the Biden administration has vowed to make it just a transition and help workers find new jobs. In remarks earlier this week, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said that President Biden was commenting on a fact of economics and technology rather than making some novel comments. Although coal is on the decline, 
thousands of workers still work at coal mines and power plants in West Virginia and parts of Wyoming, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, and also Virginia. West Virginia is Senator Joe Manchin's home state, which produces nearly 13% of the country's coal, making it the second largest producer behind the state of Wyoming. In the 50-50 divided Senate, Joe Manchin is a key swing vote, and Democrats courted him for about a year in order to pass their climate, tax, and health care bill. During that time, Joe Manchin was able to eliminate a proposal that would have used incentives and penalties to shift the country's electricity generation away from fossil fuels like coal and gas and towards greener energy sources. So friends, what are your thoughts on President Biden's comments last week regarding shutting down coal plants? Please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section below. Well, my great and dearest friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, thank you so much, friends, for joining me here every day when I post a new video. The winner of today's Walmart gift card giveaway of $200 is Michelle Jacobson. Congratulations, my friend. To claim your gift card, please check your notifications page and send me an email or send me a message on my Facebook page. Thank you, my dear friends, and have a wonderful and blessed week. Well, taxing and spending spree needs to end, and before it actually begins with the next iteration of it, it's really important. You think about the fact that uh, on Monday, I was getting ready to head to the airport, stopped by a gas station to put gas in my truck. $2.85 a gallon. So I literally said to myself, I can't remember what it was late last year, so I looked it up. Same same gas station, Sproul Avenue, North Charleston, $1.99 a gallon last fall. Today, $2.85. Senator McConnell said it's so important. Literally during the midst of the pandemic, since then, Americans have seen a 3.5% increase in their wages, but inflation at 5.4% is an actual reduction in the take-home pay of everyday Americans. How do we see that? Well, we see that inflationary effect. Rental cars, 87% increase year on year. Used cars, 45%. Gas nationally, 45%. Laundry machines, they make, they make them in Sam, at Samsung in Newberry, South Carolina. A 45% increase. Airfare is 24%. Moving expenses, 17%. Hotels, 16%. Furniture, 8%. Bacon. God knows we love bacon, even in our pizza. 8.4%. TV, 7%. Fruit, 7%. Shoes, 6%. Literally, the staples of American life are increasing exponentially. And that's before the inflationary effect of this next COVID, so to speak, relief package. And if you listen to Larry Summers, as Lindsay said, you'd come to the conclusion that common sense ain't so common anymore. People keep asking us on this package, why can't you find common ground? Because there's no common sense. You got to have common sense to find common ground. John Thune. The bacon thing got me. Bacon. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Well, what we're talking about here is the largest expansion um, of government, the largest expansion in spending, and the largest tax increase uh, literally in the history of the country. And um, it's not going to be temporary. Uh, we all know how this works. Uh, Ronald Reagan once said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that the closest thing to immortality on this planet is a government program. Once this spending is locked in, it's going to be there permanently. And um, that is the, the vision that the Democrats have. 